157th Founders Day celebration. Legacy and honor, a round of applause for around the world. <laughs> Music provided by the University Concert Band, director Mr. Billy Bennett. Our audio provided by Perfect Sound, and the video provided by BSU TV. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the presentation of the colors and the singing of the Star Spangled Banner and lift every voice and sing. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Miss Imani Reed, 75th 
Miss Bowie State University, a round of applause. Good morning, everyone. Greetings, I am Imani Reed, the 75th Miss Bui State University. Reflecting on my four years here at our beloved institution, I can't help but get emotional because time has flown. Graduation is exactly a month away, and as I get ready to say my goodbyes so it has been a home away from home, I want to leave you all with this message, never give up on your journey. Have you ever beat yourself up about giving up on a goal too soon? Maybe you told yourself you were going to run for a student leadership position, but didn't because you didn't have enough time to prepare. Or maybe you wanted to start your own business, but there were too many struggles interfering. You put the things you loved on the back burner, gave up on your dreams, and said it was too late for you. If there is one thing that I've learned and been able to cherish here at Bowie State University, it will be trusting my journey. Freshman year, I ran for Miss Freshman and I lost. I was also trying to become a contracted cadet in our ROTC program, which ended up didn't happen. If I had given up then, which I didn't, I trusted my journey, and as I entered my sophomore year, I was able to have serve as the Miss Sophomore and finish my first semester of sophomore year as a contracted cadet. Things didn't work out the way I planned for my freshman year, but that didn't mean that it would never happen. If I had given up on my dreams because they didn't happen when I wanted, I would not be standing before you as the 75th Miss, U Miss Wee State University and soon to be commissioned as a second lieutenant in the U.S. Army. This is just one testimony of many that happens every day here at Bowie State University. Our beloved institution gives us opportunities, gives us resources, and gives us advisors to help us along our journey. What is for you will never pass you. Do not get discouraged when things don't happen as you plan. Allow things to flow and happen at the right time, timing for your journey. Allow things to happen just as they should. Giving up is never an option, no matter how difficult your journey may get. So pick your dreams back up, dust them off, and get back on track. You are much closer than you think. Please know that someone is waiting for you to, excuse me, please know that someone is waiting on what is to come through you. They're waiting on a mentorship, a book, or even a business that has to be birthed through you. If you only do what you can, you will never be more than what you are. Long live Keyshawn. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage, Dr. Aminta H. Bro, 10th President of Bowie State University. Thank you so very much. You may be seated. It is so great to see everyone here today in person. Can you imagine uh, just being able to celebrate just being in person. Could we have imagined this over two years ago that we would be so excited to celebrate together in this way? I am just so thrilled to be with you once again to celebrate our Founders Day. And yes, I am the very proud 10th president of Bowie State University. I would like to take this time to thank our ROTC battalion under the leadership of Lieutenant Colonel Kareem Fernandez. Please give him a round of applause. I'd also like to thank so many others who have contributed to today's ceremony. Let's give a round of applause for our university concert band under the direction of Mr. Billy Bennett and the gospel choir led by Professor Latonya Wren and Ms. Imani Reed, our 75th Ms. Bowie State University for our moment of centering. There are many special guests joining us here today, and I'd like to introduce you to the platform party just behind me. I'd like to begin with our staff council president, Mr. George Jones. Would you please rise? <laughs> Faculty Senate Chair, Dr. Ayanna Lynch. 
not with us today, but I do want to acknowledge as we adhere to a shared governance model here at Bowie State University, we appreciate, especially during these very challenging times that we face, the input from each of our shared governance stakeholder groups. And I'd like to acknowledge the work of our students, president of SGA, Jataya Stewart, and GSA president, Michael McGee. Please give them all a round of applause. Joining us here in the audience uh, are members of the Dean's Council. I would like for all of our deans to please rise at this time so we may acknowledge you and celebrate you for your leadership throughout the year. Deans in the audience, please rise. They're, oh, they are behind me. Excuse me. <laughs> We have with us Dean Lawrence McNeil, College of Business, Dean Georgia Kwa, College of Arts and Sciences, Dean Cheryl Blackman, College of Professional Studies, and Dean Cosmos Walkefer, Graduate Studies. Again, another round of applause. Sitting in for our Dean Jetter for the College of Education, I'd like to acknowledge Dr. Alex Anderson. Thank you for joining us today and being a part of today's ceremony. Joining me be behind me also are members of the President's Cabinet. We have with us VP Anthony Savia, VP for Administration and Finance. Please rise <laughs> and remain standing. <laughs> Executive Vice President Karen Johnson Shahid, General Counsel and Chief of Staff. <laughs> Ms. Cassandra Robinson, Director of University Relations and Marketing. Vice President for Enrollment Management and Student Affairs, Brian Clemens. <laughs> Vice President for Athletics and Recreation, Mr. Clyde Dowdy. <laughs> Vice President for DOIT, or otherwise known as the Department of Information and Technology, Mr. Maurice Tyler. <laughs> and our very own Vice President for Academic Affairs and Provost, Dr. Carl Goodman. Please give them all a round of applause. <laughs> Joining us today for this program is a member of the student regents, uh, of the regents from uh, the University System of Maryland, Mr. Oyotola Oladayo. Ms. Uh, please give him a round of applause. <laughs> And thank you for your leadership throughout the year, being a member of the University System of Maryland Board of Regents. He is not just a student regent, he is a regent. He's leading the way with full responsibilities and accountability for the oversight of our 12 member institutions. I think he deserves a bigger round of applause for all that he's doing. We also have joining us Ms. Carolyn Thorpe, President of the African Student Association. And Mr. Isaiah Ford, President of the Commuter Students, SGA. And last but not least, Mr. Austin Carver, Communications Broadcast Journalism Junior, member of Omega Sci-Fi Fraternity. <laughs> All will bring us, uh, he will bring us some remarks in a little while, but welcome to the platform party. I also would like to acknowledge our student organizations who have attended today's event. And I also would like to acknowledge those students in the fall of 2021 and spring of 2022 deans list, as well as the honor and professional societies. Are there members in the audience who are in those categories? If you are, please rise at this time. I just want to make sure we know who you are for all of your achievements. We're so, so very proud of you. Outstanding. Thank you, students. As we gather to honor the founding of the first and oldest HBCU in the state of Maryland, we are reminded of our humble beginnings in the basement of a Baltimore church on the corner of Saratoga and Calvert Streets. Our beloved Bowie State University was established just two years after the Emancipation Pro Proclamation was issued. And when a group comprised of nearly 50 businessmen, lawyers, clergymen, and Quakers honored their commitment to opening schools to educate the state's newly freed black citizens. 
During its existence, members of the normal school number one and now Bowie State University, we have faced many obstacles, including threats to voting rights, violence in our communities, and inequities, disparities, and challenges to social justice. And most recently, we have had to navigate a global pandemic and still more threats to our campus community. Still, the commitment to providing a high quality education to our students has never faltered. And like our mascot, the Bulldog, our students, faculty, and staff, we remain resilient. Even during trying times, we have continued to execute our strategic plan, Racing to Excellence, by remaining laser focused on our goals. Our faculty has stayed the course by performing relevant research and teaching that is just outstanding and second to none. We have addressed the various social and political issues of our time, like educational funding, restorative justice, and the opioid addictions that continue to plague our communities. Our resilience has led to many achievements for Bowie State University, including our ranking as a top 25 HBCU in the country. A round of applause, top 25. <laughs> but never fear, we don't rest on our laurels around here. Hence, we are racing to excellence, and there's more to come. We are also noted as a top five Maryland University for graduating African Americans with bachelor's degrees in nursing, biology, and computer and information sciences. Yes. We are a recognized STEM leader, and we remain committed to educating the new generations of teachers, social scientists, and artists prepared to take their place in a rapidly changing world, armed with an entrepreneurial mindset. And BSU alumni, like our keynote speaker alumnus, Mike, uh, Mr. Luke Lawall, Jr., are building on that legacy of achievement. We are so proud to welcome Mr. Lawall back home to Bowie State University as we honor our past, embrace our present, and anticipate what our future holds. On a day like today, when we take the time out to recognize those who have paved the way and celebrate those continuing on the path and the challenges of our global community that we face today, I am reminded of a quote from one of the inspirations for civil rights and freedom across the world, Mahatma Gandhi. A small body of determined spirits fired by an unquenchable faith in their mission can alter the course of history. Our founders made history when they opened the doors to what would become Bowie State University, doing something never before imagined. It was the determination of our founders that created Bowie State University, the support of our alumni, family, and friends that shaped us into what we are today and the innovative mindsets of our current students that will sustain us in the years to come. Before closing, I want to remind everyone the work continues. We are racing to excellence each and every day. And I want to thank each and every one of you who are here today and those who are watching virtually. Thank you for staying the course, racing to excellence with us, and continuing to pave the way for this generation and future generations to have the way forward to get their education. Give yourselves a round of applause. Before closing and introducing our next speaker, I do want to remind everyone just this week is Earth Week, and there are many ways that we as a community here at BSU can help our global community through your actions. Please take a look at the calendar to determine what you can do to make a difference for future generations. And now we will be welcomed by Mr. Isaiah Ford, the president of our Commuter Student Association, and Ms. Carolyn Thorpe, president of the African Psych Psychology Student Association. They will be followed by Mr. Darren Swain, who will bring greetings on behalf of the Bowie State University National Alumni Association. Let's welcome Mr. Isaiah Ford, and let's welcome everyone to Bowie State University's Founders Day.
BSU. BSU. Sorry, that was on my bucket list for the longest. <laughs> Greetings on behalf of the Student Government Association. When this committee selected me as this year's speaker, they knew there was no one better suited to discuss legacy than the person who has captured pivotal moments in our past. And no one better suited to discuss honor than someone who's had the honor of serving the student body. My name is Isaiah E. Ford, serving as a Student Government Association historian and the Commuter Student Association president. When I first saw the Bowie State sign, I knew this was gonna change my life forever. Leaving high school as a musician to now, a public relations major with the pursuit of a master in psychology. Who would have thought? Being heavily active on campus, I've met many leaders. And as you're sitting in your seats looking at me, they have taught me respect, dignity, and pride, three attributes every Bulldog needs. Through me, you've heard stories of what Bowie used to be, once was, and now how far we've come. I've always said that the pandemic has reset the Bowie culture. The Bowie State I once knew has been wiped clean and is a blank canvas waiting to create a better and bolder future. Legacy in Latin means bodies of persons sent on a mission. You are Bowie's legacy. So I'm here to see you on a mission to take over the world. To the class of BSU 22, to my class, we are next. The next person you'll see at your doctor's appointment, the next person to answer your 911 call, the next person to approve your bank loan, and the next person reporting live on TV. Let's get the degrees, per. <laughs> <laughs> to the class, BSU 23, I leave you with my honor. Sorry, I leave you with my legacy. <laughs> I've seen you all grow and mature making your impact on this university. I know you'll carry my legacy along with you to your destiny of greatness. To the class BSU 24, I leave you with my honor. You are the class that experienced the many phases of Bowie and still stands before me, continuing your academics. I know you'll keep our honor strong. You are Bowie's most resilient class in history. And to the class of BSU 25 and those who follow, I leave you with Bowie State University because I know, no matter what, the legacy and honor we've placed will guide you to your future of success. I bleed that black and go. I bleed that black and go. I bleed that B-O-A-C-K-G-L-O-D is so bold. And now working, Ms. Carol Thorpe. Greetings. On behalf of the graduate school here at Bowie State University, my name is Carolyn Thorpe. I'm a school counseling master's student, master's degree student, and I'm currently serving as a graduate research assistant, teaching assistant, and the president of the African Psychology Student Association. My time on Bowie's campus has challenged me to not just do, but to do more, learn more, and achieve more. As a first generation college student and the first person in my family to pursue a master's degree from a traditional campus, I understand the importance of furthering your education but also making the choice to do so on a historically black campus. On January 9th, 1864, Bowie State University was the first historically black institution of higher education founded in Maryland. A group of men from diverse backgrounds, lawyers, businessmen, clergymen, and Quakers understood the importance of creating an education system meant to benefit those newly freed, formerly enslaved Africans. On May 20th, I will be a two-time HBCU graduate, making the decision to pursue my undergraduate degree at Bennett College, an all-female historically black college, and my graduate degree from Bowie State, a historically black university, has been most beneficial 
not only to the advancement of my career goals, but also in my growth as a young black woman in America. I have learned strength, perseverance, encountered setbacks, turned into setups, and embarked on opportunities that I would, have, would not have imagined possible. HBCUs provide chances, learning experiences, and leadership opportunities while being surrounded by endless black excellence. In the moments when you feel like throwing in the towel, there will always be someone in your corner there to encourage you to keep going. So on this Founders Day celebration, I encourage you to reflect upon the legacy of Bowie State University, where a bold, courageous group of black men came together from to form an institution for us to be able to build upon their legacy, for black people to be able to not just follow in their footsteps, but to create our own path of success to provide us with 101 spaces to embark on countless enriching academic experiences in hopes to become the next group of businessmen and women, doctors, lawyers, engineers, entrepreneurs, school counselors, and mental health professionals for generations to come. Bowie State University is here to create these opportunities for students to be brighter and bolder than we have ever thought possible. Thank you. Hello, first, um, giving honor to God. Let me thank our ancestors and founders for caring when they didn't have to and sacrificing for a future that they wouldn't experience. To Dr. Bro and her administration, I salute you for your continued stewardship of this treasure we call Bowie State University. To our special guests and elected leaders, I say thank you for your continued investment in Bowie State University. To our honored speaker of the day, alumnus Luke Lawal, continue to excel while staying grounded and connected to alma mater. I bring you greetings on behalf of the Bowie State University National Alumni Association, established 1939, incorporated 1940, 83 years of committed service and support. When I was asked to bring greetings on behalf of the National Alumni Association, my thoughts immediately took me to Baltimore, Maryland on January 3rd, 1865, in the basement of the African Baptist Church at the corner of Saratoga and Calvert Streets in the Cranes Building, a facility designated to accommodate 370 freed slaves in four classrooms with four teachers. My thoughts didn't stop there. I then thought about Nelson Wells, a freed slave that would give his life savings of $3,500 to establish a trust fund to educate black children in Baltimore that would provide much needed early funding of what would become BSU. But my thoughts, they didn't stop there. I moved quickly to June 16, 1911, when the new site of what would become Bowie State University was dedicated in this farming community that we call Bowie, Maryland, rich in award-winning Triple Crown equestrian history. But my thoughts, too, didn't stop there. Many students like our beloved J. Sidney Shepherd, who delayed the completion of their education to serve in, the, in, in, the, in World War II, and later then two terms as the National Alumni President, I thought about him. I thought about Dr. Martha, Martha Putney, a trailblazing professor here at Bowie State University, Ivy League trained, the first female department head here at Bowie State University, and a member of the Army's Women's Corps, a historic figure. You should look her up. She was one of the greatest generations, as designated by Colin Powell. But my thoughts didn't stop there. I thought our elevation as a teacher's college in the early 1900s, the addition of our graduate programs in the 1970s, and our eventual designation as a university in the fall of 1988 are the things that I'm most proud of. They produced people like Tony Braxton, Grammy, Ward, Grammy winner, Troy Weaver, the general manager of the Detroit Pistons, Miles Frost, our student who currently performs on Broadway as Michael Jackson, and Jamin Gallman, who's one of the executives at SpaceX. But my thoughts, it didn't stop there. Our foundation is strong. It continues to allow the unprecedented growth that students like Luke can continue to soar. Students like you in the audience, you have next, as our previous speaker said. 
So I thought about my speaking this morning, and I wanted to give just a minute, but I wanted to say this, because one of my mentors, Perrin Mitchell, who was one of the former congressmen and founders of the Congressional Black Caucus, he would always use this quote as we would go around and speak with him. It's a quote by Benjamin Mays, and it goes like this. I have only just a minute, 60 seconds in it, Forced upon me, can't refuse it. I didn't seek it, I didn't choose it. But I know it's up to me to use it. I must suffer if I lose it, and I must give account if I abuse it. It's just a tiny little minute, but eternity is in it. Bowie State University, our legacy is your legacy. We're in it. We just have a minute. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Swain. We are energized at this time. That is wonderful. Thank you for sharing those historic moments. Yes, please give him another round of applause. Thank you. At this time, I would like to take a few moments to acknowledge those of Bowie State University, uh, members of our community who have passed since last, the last school year. Yes, we have been through challenges. And we are a strong community, and today we wrap our arms around those who mourn, and we extend our deepest sympathy to the families. Members of the family and friends may stand when your loved one is announced. We will begin with Mr. Justin Taylor, a student, sophomore. Justin carried his love of music to college. He was a sophomore at Bowie State University, majoring in music performance. He was a proud member of the BSU Symphony of Soul. He was a member of the pep and jazz bands, and he was also a member of the Bowie State University Navigators, a Christian ministry organization. His mother is with us today, Mrs. Davenport. <laughs> Bertram. Adolfa Adams, student, one of our first male cheerleaders, College of Education. Dr. Lucille B. Strain, College of Education, retired professor of reading. Ms. Tonita L. Douglas, program administrative specialist, College of Arts and Sciences. Ms. Mary Royster, Department of Mathematics, retired administrative assistant for the Department of Mathematics. Dr. Renardo Hall, former Vice President of Student Affairs, beloved leader and mentor to many. Dr. George C. Simmons, a renowned scholar who spent many of his later years compiling the history of Bowie State University. Ms. Willie White, Department of Facilities Management. Mr. Calvin Blake, Department of Facilities Management and a former campus groundskeeper and Ms. Chris, Christine D. Pack, Department of Facilities Management, former administrative assistant in facilities for 35 years of service. Please, let's give them a round of applause. We will now have a musical selection followed by the introduction of the speaker of the hour, we will now have a musical selection by our gospel choir, and they will sing, I'll Never Forget. Thank you.
ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for it. Bowie Zone Gospel Choir heard around the world. Let's give them another round of applause for that musical spirit. And now, welcome to the podium, Mr. Austin Carver, communication and broadcast journalism student. Good morning, everyone. God is good all the time. I ain't gonna lie, when that music came on, I leaned over to Dr. Lynch and I said, don't make me get freaky. I started feeling it, I'm not gonna lie. All right. Luke Lou Wall Jr. is a CEO and founder of Ellen Company, a minority-based corporation in Los Angeles, California, having founded and established a diverse portfolio, diverse portfolio of business ventures. The millennial is passionate about entrepreneurship, specifically amongst young professionals and giving back to his community in an effort to grow the next generation of leaders. Luke's first Excuse me. Luke's first foray into entrepreneurship began in 2011 during his undergrad career at Bowie State University when he founded HBCU Buzz, a promotional and progressive brand created to generate awareness of HBCU collegiate culture. The Buzz promotes pride and unity within all HBCU communities in order to enhance the black college experience and improve the black, um, excuse me. and improve the perception of America's historically black colleges and universities. The media outlet provides trends and breaking news about all black colleges and universities by strategically utilizing references from schools, organizations, and media outlets. The company is currently the leading source of HBCU news for all historically black colleges and universities. Luke used his sharp methods matched with his passion for change to lead HBCU Buzz to become the most influential brand in the HBCU community, which also landed him a spot on the DMV top 30 under 30 list in 2014. In an effort to cultivate a unique space for men of color, Luke also co-founded Suited Lifestyle among, uh, along with a colleague from Howard University before he graduated. Suited Lifestyle is designed to create an extensive network designed to create extensive work of young professionals and other progressive like-minded individuals from various walks of life who all share a commitment to leadership, self, sufficiency, and peer-to-peer -peer engagement through all social and cultural events. Today, the young CEO and entrepreneur is focused on his next business venture, Taper, an app designed to change how hairstyles and barbers engage with their consumers, as well as mental health entity, Root Care Health. Luke is also a master mason and a proud member of Omega Sapphire Fraternity. Everybody, let's give it up for my pro fight, Luke Lou Wall Jr. It's a little short. I gotta bring this up a little bit. Let's see. Okay. Hello, Bowie State. I have to say it's an honor and privilege to stand here today in Maryland, back on campus, addressing the next generation of change makers. I would also be remiss if I did not give honor and glory to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for the grace and mercy he has provided me for the last 33 years of a journey that led me right here today. I also want to thank Amita Bro, our 10th and first female president, the Board of Trustees, 
And I also want to thank Janetta Hardy for her continued support and having me here today. A lot has changed since I've been on campus. Uh, for starters, I noticed that there's a new entrepreneurship building. And I'm like, you know, entrepreneur, entrepreneurship building, you know, entrepreneur. <laughs> um, Luke Lawal Jr. School of Entrepreneur has a nice little ring to it, you know what I'm saying? You see me, you see me dropping my hints, okay. Um, but all jokes aside, this past week, I made a series of phone calls to people in my life to help me find some inspirational words to share with you all. And it's funny because I asked a former professor of mine and she said, talk about mentorship and all the people in my life that's helped me get here today. Then I talked to my accountant and he said, talk about how much money you've made and how they can all get here. <laughs> then I talked to my girlfriend and she said, talk about me. <laughs> Tell them how much you love me. <laughs> I love you, Hope. All jokes aside, the last phone call was to my best friend. Instead of making a suggestion, he made something, he asked me something a little different. He made a question. And he said, all the days that you walked on the campus of Bowie State University, who made the most impact? And after sitting with that question for a little bit, my answer was simple. It was all the people in this building and in this, on this campus that helped me learn how to dream. See, a dream is a succession of images, ideas, and emotions that occur involuntarily in the mind during stages of sleep. And some experts say that dreams have no connections to real emotions or thoughts. They're just strange stories that don't relate to normal life. And some experts say that some dreams reflect our own underlying thoughts and feelings and our deepest desires, fears, and concerns. Nevertheless, the experts still cannot describe or instruct how to dream. See, dreaming is no easy feat. To dream, one must do the thing that's, oh, sorry, excuse me. To dream is to do more than just closing one's eyes and falling asleep. See, it's hard to dream. Dreaming requires hope. Dreaming requires faith. Dreaming requires that one must be able to visualize another reality beyond what's tangible. And that's no easy task. Especially in a world like this where racism, sexism, and classism seems to be ever present and all powerful. It's hard to dream. It's hard to dream in a country like this where black lives don't seem to matter and black suffering is as accessible as opening our phones to Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. It's hard to dream when it seems like our neighborhoods lie in ruins and the resources are few, but the drugs and guns are plenty. It's hard to dream. Yet I can stand here today proudly and say I'm in a room full of dreamers. I would argue that every student and the member of the class of 2022 is a dream come true. You're the result of someone else's dream. You're the dream of the enslaved people on auction blocks and plantations not too far from here, but despite the chains that held their bodies, they dreamed of freedom and liberation for their children. You're the dream of the fathers and mothers who worked for hours on fields that they never owned who picked and harvest crops that they never ate, who cleaned houses that they never slept in, who raised children that weren't theirs, but they still had the faith for a future to better for their family. You're the dream of the mighty men and women who marched in the civil rights era, and despite the threat of nooses and water hoses, they dreamed of a time where black men and women would be able to sit in classrooms and learn without fear. You're the dream of every person that was stripped away by the evil claws of white supremacy. Freddie Gray, Trayvon Martin, Eric Gardner, Sandra Bland, Chantel Davis, Shelley Frey, Kayla Moore, Miriam Carey, Richard Collins, and even Jesus Christ himself. We all dreamed. You're the dream of the founders of our beloved institution who gathered in a basement in a church in Baltimore 
and dreamed of a school where minds would be transformed and our hearts would be inspired. When I first came to Bowie, it was hard to dream. But then I met dreamers like my track coach, Coach Michelle Lattimore, who made my cross country race worth the distance. Then I met dreamers like my microbiology professor, Tatum Broughton, who demanded more from me and taught me how to raise the bar. Then I met dreamers like all the custodial staff that didn't let a day go by without telling me that, without calling me Hollywood and telling me like, that boy's going places. Professors, administrators, and all the staff that dreamed so big that I didn't have a choice but to dream and believe in myself. And it wasn't just the adults. See, Bowie surrounded me with dreamers like Dior Ginyard, who transferred to Bowie after fracturing in his skull playing football, but turned that same passion into a million dollar career in sports off the field. Dreamers like Jonathan Macer and an entire Dirty Dozen who helped me see it through as we pledged the greatest <laughs> fraternity on the planet, Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated, on the greatest campus in the greatest chapter right here at Bowie State University, Esplan Sigma. See, my dean introduced me to my favorite poem, If, by Rudyard Kempen. My favorite line from the poem is, if you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same. See, the people surrounding these walls dream so big and so wide that I didn't have a choice but to dream too. They didn't try to make their dreams mine, but they motivated me to dream of my own. And I'm sure all of you know how hard it is to dream and how hard it is to hold on to your dreams. Despite your circumstances, your trials and falls and mistakes, you dreamed anyway. Some of you had family issues, but you dreamed anyway. Some of you had money issues, but you dreamed anyway. Some of you had neighborhood issues, science issues, English issues, Math 99 issues, <laughs> but you're still dreaming. Some of you know what hunger feels like, and some of you know what if anger feels, and frustration, depression, and loneliness. And we all know what wanting to give up feels like, but you dreamed anyway. It was my family that taught me how to dream first. My mother, a foreigner to this country, raising two kids, working two, three jobs, but still managing to graduate summa cum laude from Howard University, she dreamed of more opportunities for her children. I remember being 12 years old and asking my mom to sign a permission slip for me to go on a field trip to New York City. And I was so excited because I heard about New York, even though I learned about it, I'd never been. And I couldn't hide my excitement. And I had a pen and paper ready, and not to mention I was on my best behavior all week. <laughs> and when signing was halted for a quick second, I was immediately sad. And my mother said, wait, why are you so excited? And I responded, because I've been dreaming about New York all week. And her response to me was, I traveled to plenty of cities and over 10 countries and counting. When I was 17, I left Nigeria to come to this country, not for a better education, but to start a new life. It was my dream that, it was my dream to travel to the States and have kids filled with opportunities, but now it's my dream that, that you begin to travel the world and experience it for yourself until you find a place you call home. And today, I've been to 45 of the 50 states and nearly 10 different countries. If it wasn't for my mom's room for me to be able to dream, I don't know where I would be. And right here on this campus, in a dorm room full with four dreamers, yes, it was tight, I sparked a concept that led me to my first million dollar business, HBCU Buzz. See, I dreamed of a time where HBCUs would be celebrated in mainstream media for all the achievements and not the few shortcomings. I dreamed of a period where people would stop asking if historically black colleges were relevant and start, but start asking where would we be without historically black colleges and universities. When I began to conceptualize this dream out loud in a room full of dreamers, 
A match took a flame in my soul, creating a catalyst that fed me to feed my desire to transfer this dream into a reality. And then I kept dreaming. Then came my second company, Root Care Health. And then I kept dreaming. Then came my third company, Taper Inc. And I'm not done dreaming yet. And I owe it to my family to keep dreaming. Although we're already a dream come true, just by being here, I challenge you all to keep dreaming. T. Lawrence once said, all, the people, all people dream, but not equally. Those who dream by night in the dusty reaches of their minds awake to the day to find it was all vanity. But those, of the, those dreamers of the day are dangerous, for they act out their dreams with their eyes open. So take this occasion, this Founders Day, not just to, as a dream come true, but a license to continue dreaming. For there's nothing more dangerous than a black man or woman with a diploma in one hand and a dream in another. We challenge you to dream for a better Maryland. We charge you to dream for a better America. We compel you to dream for a better world. Dream passionately, dream ferociously, Dream courageously, dream fearlessly, dream lovingly. In these seats are the future doctors, future lawyers, future senators, future teachers, future politicians, future barbers, future beauticians, future chefs, future musicians, future scientists, future architects, and future trade specialists. I know the world needs your specific talents and crafts, but my hope is that no matter where you go, no matter what you do, however you go, no matter what happens to you, you'll never stop dreaming. I'm reminded of a story by Larry Beth Jones, I mean, excuse me, I'm reminded of a story by Lori Beth Jones, and she tells the story of a young man who's fallen asleep. Upon falling asleep, he's having an amazingly beautiful, vivid dream. He was running in a field with green cut grass bordered by daisies and lilies and roses. He was running joyfully and gleefully through this field and all of a sudden his dream was interrupted by a bear. This bear was tracing him through the field and the young man was filled with fear and panic. He's running and running and he's running out of breath and he soon begins to tire and he begins to fall. In desperation, he looks at the bear and he says, Mr. Bear, are you going to eat me? And the bear stops midair and he says, I don't know. This is your dream. <laughs> to the class of 2022, this is your dream. You will make the difference. This is your dream. You will change the world. This is your dream. You will be the one. This is your dream. This is your dream. Thank you. tall there. <laughs> Mr. Laval, please come forward. Thank you for those inspiring words for this entire campus community, especially for our students who are here today and viewing this program. It was truly inspiring. Thank you for telling your story. Thank you for remembering your alma mater wherever you go. You follow me on Twitter, I'm following you on Twitter. We're going to tell that story. We're so very proud of all that you have achieved. Uh, throughout your career, and there's so much more we know that lies ahead. As a small token of our appreciation, please come forward. I'd like to bestow upon you just a small token of our appreciation for you being our keynote speaker here at our Founders Day, and, for thank and thanks for all that you do for Bowie State University. Thank you for inspiring the next generation. Please, another round of applause.
We will now have a selection by the University Concert Band in His Grace. On this bright, sunny morning, we take time to reflect on our historic past and continuing legacy of achievement. Good morning, President Bro. There's a saying that goes on a commercial, um, we leave the light on, or the porch light on, if you remember that commercial. Welcome home, Mr. Lawal. To our members of our cabinet, our outstanding faculty, our devoted staff, Mr. Swain and our Alumni Association, our cherished retirees, our friends, guests, and to our amazing and talented students, I bring you greetings on behalf of Academic Affairs. Scholastic achievement is in the classroom sets our students apart from others in terms of success. Whether that success leads to career opportunities or pursuits to graduate degrees, as part of our Founder Day celebration, we are here to recognize scholastic achievements of our students who have recipients of the Dean's Honors List. The Dean's List consists of students who have earned a semester GPA of 3.5 or better. We are proud to boast that out of the 6,300 students for this academic year, we have close to 1,200 students who are on the Dean's List for this fall 2021 semester. I would like to ask all of our um, Dean's List recipients to please stand. <laughs> the 
This is a remarkable achievement of our true scholar bulldogs that shows persistence and resilience in your studies. Please stand, continue to stand for me, please. <laughs> Everyone around this room, please join me in congratulating our fall 2021 Dean's recipients. For those of you who may not know, we, prevented, we presented our scholars with a, a medallion that reads, Bowie State University, Fall 2021, Dean's List. And on the back it says, Academic Excellence, Founders Day 2022. As we applaud you for your academic success, I would like to give a gentle reminder to you all to not let up, to continue pushing yourselves, and to excel throughout your matriculation here at Bowie State University. The race to excellence continues, and those who will continue will set lofty goals for themselves and be rewarded. Continue to be a role model to your, um, to your fellow classmates, to your family, and to your friends. And as we leave today, particularly when we look at our celebration for our Founders Day, we talk about the legacy. But as Mr. Lawal mentioned about dreamers, and I do know a, a true dreamer before, um, thank you for the, the time, again, for being here. Thank you for your efforts. And we wish you all the best for your future endeavors. Congratulations once again. Good morning, everyone. Um, I am Tony Savia, the Vice President of Administration and Finance here at Bowie State University. Thank you, thank you. So I get the honor and privilege today to recognize uh, some wonderful uh, employees uh, here at the university, those who retired in the calendar year of 2021. We had over 30 people retire last year. I'm jealous. I wish I could say that I was retiring. <laughs> I've got a long way to go, though. Founders Day is not about just recognizing and honoring our past, but it's also about honoring those who've decided to move forward in a new chapter in their life. So it's important that we do recognize those who have retired because they're not just, um, they're, they're gonna move forward and start this new chapter, but they're not gonna leave us 100%. Uh, we, we look to them for their guidance, their advice and counsel throughout the years. And I do know that, that they will always be here for us. So this morning, we are going to recognize those individuals who are actually able to join us today and we're gonna do it by division. So first I'm gonna ask the provost if he would come up and stand over here, if I could get uh, Dr. Bro as well. And I will then start uh, to call up the individuals. If you would then enter the stage from my right, your left, enter up and we can uh, make sure that we, we acknowledge uh, you and for your service here at, at Bowie State. So first, uh, academic affairs, Ms. Uh, Margaret Cameron Gross. Next, we have Elaine Gunter.
Mr. Paul Hester. Nelson Petulante. Sarita Roy. Marion Rucker Shamu. Thank you, uh, Dr. Goodman and Pre uh, President Bro, but you need to stay up here, Dr. Bro, because we've got more. And now the Division of Administration and Finance. So I'm going to call myself up to the to the stage, and I'll be joining Dr. Bro. For, first, we have Carlise Merton. Mr. Gary Thomas.
Ernest Waiters. Josephus Weeks. Uh, next, may I have Maurice Tyler come up uh, and stand here with us so we can recognize those in Division of Information Technology. <laughs> Vernell Lawson. Edna Palmer. Now if I could have Dr. Brian Clemens come up so we could recognize those in enrollment, management, and student affairs. Sharon Glaster. Shirley Holt.
Gailey Jones. If I could have uh, Mr. Dowdy come up so that we can recognize athletics and recreation services. Mr. Greg Goins. Ladies and gentlemen, if we could have one more round of applause for our retirees. Actually, we have one more that, has, that was able to be with us. We want to make sure we recognize Dr. Tanya Swanson is here. Ladies and gentlemen, how about another warm round of applause for our retirees? And now please stand for the singing of the alma mater, led by Asha Hopkins, and remain standing for the retiring of the colors and closing remarks by Mr. Ayatollah Oludayo. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Hopkins, and now closing remarks by Mr. Oludayo. Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing today? Um, before I start um, in reflection of our founders and the work of those that established this beautiful, illustrious university, I'd like to take a moment to um, recognize our current torch torchbearer, current leadership, um, President Bro. <laughs> Thank you. I'd like to thank you for all that you do for our university and all that you've done in leading the race towards excellence and changing the appeal, the boosting of the morale student body on campus. So um, thank you for your leadership <laughs> and honoring the legacy of our founders. So thank you. Um, to Mr. Lawal, thank you so much for returning to campus. It's always an honor to have you know, our successful alumni come back and speak to us. Um, personally, I feel like I wouldn't be in this position today if it wasn't for the words of some of our alumni um, contributing to my experience. So thank you for returning and for those inspirational words. So, <laughs> so I promise I won't be too long. So um, I'd like to first say good morning to our um, student body, staff members, family and friends um, in association to our university. Today, we celebrate the work of our founders in establishing this illustrious university 157 years ago. I am forever grateful for their efforts all those years ago to bring us to where we are today as the first historically black university in Maryland. But I'd like to first ask that we take a moment to sort of take a look back and the perspective of what it really meant to found this university all those years ago. At a time when it was a topic of scientific study, um, the capacity to which African Americans could think critically, analyze, and even read, our founders got together, came together to found this university, giving an academic opportunity to a socially, polit politically, and economically dismissed people. For a lot of those within the first class of Bowie State University at the time, uh, normal school number three, the education, the academic opportunity was a dream because not too long before, it was considered, for, uh, it was deemed illegal for African Americans to read or write. So today, we must understand the importance of our unique experience here at Bowie State and understand, uh, take, sorry, take pride being members of the Bowie State community and using our academic experience not only to be of benefit to the overall community, but to also, with our academic experience, contribute to the community here on campus and continue to be torchbearers of the legacy and honoring our founders that established this university in 1865. So may our, may our university continue to endure the test of time and may our endeavors as students and staff continue to be blessed. I leave you with a quote from my personal hero, Malcolm X, who said that education is a passport to the future, for tomorrow begins, uh, tomorrow belongs to those that begin to prepare for it today. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain seated for our recessional. Thank you. Also, we'd like to invite all of you after this program, please join us as we celebrate the dedication of Bowie State University's historical torch at the Center for Natural Scientists, Mathematics, and Nursing 
immediately following the recessional. Once again, I want to thank you for joining us for Bowie State University's 157th Founders Day celebration. Legacy and honor continues.